Hey everybody, it's Dave from What's Game Now. Uh, I have with me, once again, Nick, who is our resident managers expert, uh, especially our War Machine expert. And uh, he is doing so great with the theme forces and the buyer's guides for War Machine. But he also uh, plays a number of miniatures games. So we wanted to share another one with you today, which is Star Wars Legion. Star Wars Legion is the uh, miniatures game from Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, that brings, uh, well, Star Wars to the tabletop and many little, little tiny peoples. Um, so we have a, uh, a few models that we have here on the table, but before we get into the actual how to play, uh, I wanted to talk to Nick a little bit about the game and get his kind of view on, on what he thinks about it and, you know, um, where he thinks it's going and, and so on and so forth. So Nick, uh, how long have you been playing this since it came out? Uh, not really. I bought a starter box around the time it came out, and then it just kind of sat there for a while. Mm -hmm. But when the Clone Wars box came out, I saw clones, and I said, all right, I guess we're going to do this now. All right. Yeah, clones definitely bring a lot of people into the game. Uh, everybody's seen the your normal white stormtroopers and speeder bikes and stuff, and that's the nostalgia that brings people to games like this, right? The, the New Hope era troopers and so on and so forth a lot of the miniature gamers are of the age where they watch the clone wars tv show love the clone wars and that's a pretty big target audience for miniature gamers so when the clone wars came out it was hugely popular i think they actually probably more people got into it then than did at the start of the game i know and then and that's crazy because it was a cartoon right the Clone War series. It it's a series. cartoon until you watch it, and then you realize they're discussing the intricacies of do we bother taking prisoners. Yes, yes. So, so yes, it's a cartoon. That means nothing. You see that evolution of the mindset from... That's pretty early. No, that's pretty early in that, yeah. in that series. So, um, but we've got a couple of um, armies here. Uh, you can't see the stormtroopers. are a little bit further over there, but they're insignificant anyway. Uh... <laughs> Uh, we're going to have a battle uh, a little later with Vader and... Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. I couldn't tell that was Obi-Wan. Um, quick note about this game system. This covers all of currently the Clone Wars and the Galactic Civil War and Star Wars. I have every expectation that the sequel trilogy is coming. They just haven't announced it yet. I I'm sure they're playtesting it. You can play them against each other. What's if your... you want to see who would win between the Grand Army of the Republic and the Imperials, we're about to do that. If you want to see how badly the droids would go whoop on some rebels, you can do that. How would Luke Skywalker handle a dozen droidicas? Probably not well. <laughs> right. Although, to be fair, nobody really does. No doubt. So, um, the other question that I have, um, as miniatures gamers, and not just that, but the hobbyists inside of uh, miniatures gaming, uh, the models that I have... I picked up already painted from someone uh, as a trade, which mm -hmm. we often do uh, with people uh, for something they needed and something I wanted to look at. Uh, so they were already painted. I didn't get to do any assembly or anything like that. So how are they assembly-wise? Yeah, so the models are PVC plastic for the most part. Um, the droids are actually hard plastic. So things like regular plastic glue works on them. All the rest of the models you need super glue on. Um, I noticed very little cleanup in general. The models went together very well. A lot of the joints are like a weird shaped peg, like an L shaped peg, so they only go in uh, one way. Unless it doesn't matter, in which case it's just a nub, works just fine. Um, I've generally had no problem with them. The only issue I've had was the uh, speeder bikes. Um, they are glued on mine. A lot of people don't always do that. Um, getting them to sit there and get glued was kind of annoying. Um, other than that though, Models are fine. Right. Um, I wouldn't say anything to write home about. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, you get the general sense of, hey, this is what it is. They are, per and they're perfectly acceptable, and the price point isn't that dramatic for the game. Right. So this isn't like you're spending $20 a model and getting a lump of plastic, essentially. Well, we're looking, you know, look, but looking down at a table, playing a game, uh, I think they're very well suited at that, you know, two foot, three foot level. Absolutely. You um, know. The, the, you're not going to, you're not going to take a Legion model to win a painting competition, except right. for maybe that thing. Yeah. This thing um, is cool. The, ve yeah. the large vehicle models. So that, um, the clones are getting a saber tank and then the droids are getting the AAT, which is the tank you see in episode one. Right. Um, 
those look fantastic. A hundred percent. But your infantry and your smaller models are a little... Generally, a little there are a few standout ones. Um, if you want to go look around, go look up the Sabine Wren model and the Iden Versio models. Those are fan... I don't even play those factions, and I already have a Sabine, and I'm getting an Iden. They look fantastic. Okay, just an off-topic, more Star Wars-related. Sabine was only in Rebels, right? She's only in Rebels as of now. Okay. That might be subject to change if you're watching a certain Disney Plus show, you know what I'm talking about. Ah, yeah, because I love her. She's awesome. I, I've seen the Rebels um, uh, series for the most part. All of yeah, it. so so one thing about this, because it was produced by Fantasy Flight under Disney, um, everything fits on the canon. So canon characters, everything's there. Um, they may not be out yet, but it's all canon. Right. So Sabine Wren is in there. Um, Boba Fett's in there. Um, General Grievous is in there. Oh. Um, sitting in my box, I have Commander, uh, Cap I have Captain Rex for the clones. Yeah, yeah Captain Rex. Um, he's so not painted I, as Captain I Rex. I wasn't but... aware that Grievous was in there. So does he have like uh, the options of like... So the Grievous model, it's hard plastic. So right. you can assemble him with a cloak on or cloak off. Right. And then you can assemble him with gun out. Okay. Or four lightsabers. Or uh, two. <laughs> or two. So I was wondering, two or four. You can do both. Okay. You can do one side you, with two and one side with one. Are there options for magnetizing? Um, I don't think it would be doable. Where you could just um, like... I didn't <laughs> really bother because it's not really different. Right. Right. I really like... I really like... That was one thing I like about Grievous. Like, um, a lot of people don't know... Uh, well, most people watching this may not know that I was a big Disney Infinity fan. Mm -hmm. And when they put out the Star Wars figures and uh, uh, put out the play sets for that, I was really excited and you get to see Grievous in that almost Clone Wars yeah, you, you, cartoon. You can, you can you can definitely magnetize the Grievous model. Cool. There's also a lot of Grievous models floating around so buying an extra one would not be hard. Yeah, I bet. Because a lot of... Did the, it come one, in a box? One, one complaint I have about Legion is right now it's very limited on what's available for a lot of factions. If you're playing clones or if you're playing droids your first purchase after the starter box is a second starter box. Yeah. Because... Literally, there are four unit entries for those factions total. Yeah, clone troopers, phase one clone troopers, the bark speeder, Obi Wan Kenobi, and Commander Rex or Captain Rex, and then Count Dooku, Grievous, B1 battle droids, and Droidicus. I have described the entire faction. <laughs> okay, well, that's the thing, yeah, you see that quite a bit in, in a number of games where, um, I mean, I, I have one complaint against. Fantasy Flight is notorious for having logistical issues. Yes. And they were supposed to, last month, release another fruit box for each army and upgrade packs. Guess what's sitting on the boat? It's on the boat. It might come out in February. <laughs> we we need to make a video about um, the game companies and their standard phrases. Because, like, Fantasy Flight is like, it's on the boat. Uh, well, there's a reason why they have it. They, they have a, like, a, 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 a sheet that says, here's what's coming yeah, out yeah. when. There's in stores now, shipping now, on the boat, and in production are your four choices. But things always end up stuck the, on the, the boat. Well, currently it's in production. It hasn't oh. even hit the boat yet, at least as of the when I last looked. And that's one of my frustrations with Legion is right now that logistical train is hurting the game so bad. And that and that's the sad part, and I won't get into it too much. The sad part is there aren't enough resources locally to to mass produce anything like that. Like, I mean, I'm sure there are, and maybe more, they're more expensive. That's why the other places go to, like, China and other places to bring them over. And I'm yeah. not talking, like, a political thing. I'm um, just saying, like, when, so when it comes to games, we have a lot of that where, logistically, things get stuck in customs. They get stuck. Fantasy Flight is owned by Asmodee, who right. makes a lot of board games. So there's a whole lot of products being made under that umbrella. Yes. So I'm sure the Fantasy Flight just gets lumped in the production queue with all the board sure. games as well. In that case, with that kind of volume, you're probably looking at a Chinese production. That's just the way economics works, and you're going to have to deal with that. But even then, like, there's been production issues that have caused us off. Right now, I'm annoyed because all of my clone troopers should have officers and extra guns. Okay. Because that was supposed to come out a month ago. Right. But it's not out yet. And when you have such limited availability, it hurts. Right. Now, the Rebels and the Imperials are in decent shape, but the other armies aren't i would have liked a more i would have liked more initial releases sure sure and that's that's also a hard part like um when it comes to things is just how much do you actually put out but with a company like 
Like, people think that with a company like Fantasy Flight or Asmodee in general or whatever, it wouldn't be such a big deal. Oh, let's just throw that stuff out there. But they have to think about every step that they, they make. They have to think about everything. Um, my, my one comment with that is their first wave, because this isn't the first wave of Legion products. Their first wave was the box set releases for the Clone Troopers, the Droids, the Scooter, and the Droid Hits. Right. There is no reason that those should have been first. No. The, the, the two-player box set is at a phenomenal price point where a lot of people can just split that with their friends. Yeah. That's not the stuff that would have been released. I would have much rather have them seen put the officer upgrade packs, um, the Phase 2 clone troopers, and the B2 battle droids sure. would have been a... Fin- and you know maybe even throw in their doing vehicles. That would have been a phenomenal first wave. Right. This stuff, the, the regular box releases of this didn't have to come out now. But they did, and now all the other stuff caught in a snafu, and that's just a general complaint I have with Fantasy Flight in general. But right, and but I think it's important, like in videos like this, where we're introducing a game, uh, you know, because that's why that's why we don't, that's why I don't like to just go and show a how to on a game, and then talk about these things during, because I think it distracts from the game. It but from the game. but I think that. It's important to point out these things because the last thing you want to do is say, "So check out this great game. Everything's, you know, good for you to go." And then they get out there and they run into these problems that they don't know yeah, about. Yeah, so it's like, oh, I want to go play droids. I have nothing to buy aside from right, like two starter sets, sure. and that's it. And and yeah, I, I completely agree that you know, the context around the game is important. So, um. Like I said, a two-player starter box will get you uh, going on uh, learning the game and, uh, you know. With the exception of the second Kenobi, this is two clone starter boxes. This is two halves of the Clone Wars starter box for the clones. Okay. That's what that is. So, yeah. So, you you can go. You can, you and your buddy can, if you're, you and your buddy want different sides of the pack, you can split the cost. You can split the models. Kind of like Josh and I have done in the War Machine Escalation mm-hmm. series where we've just got a box and split it. Um and, and started playing from there. So it's a great way to learn with starter boxes. Like you said, uh, I've seen it a number of times with different games, whether it be Fantasy Flight or anybody else, that your next purchase that comes after your first starter box is a second starter box. I've seen it in GW. And, 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 it's, and it's, it's, it's interesting because for the Rebels and the Imperials, that would not be my advice. Yeah, You don't buy the second starter box for those factions. No. You so, have to for two of them. And again, part of it is just timing, but... I, Fantasy Flight has some issues with thinking after releases. Okay. It's just a general comment. Um, before we go, a uh, yeah, couple of personal opinions on the game here. I quite like this game. It plays fairly quickly. I have two major complaints with it. Number one, proprietary dice. Yes. And a lot of them are needed. And it's very annoying because the starter box doesn't come with enough dice. Arguably, you need three times what the starter box comes with for dice. And I found that with um, I don't think X-Wing comes with enough dice. X-Wing's not as bad, though. Okay. X-Wing comes with three attack and three defense dice, which is enough for 99% of situations. Sure. The clone box literally doesn't come with enough dice to fire the units in the box. Okay. Okay. That's infuriating. Right. Number two, you'll notice the bucket of cards. I actually don't have all the cards out here because I just put one clone trooper card out here. There should be four copies of this out. Oh. That's a lot of cards, it's a lot of keywords, and a lot of these keywords aren't listed. Hmm. They're listed, but they're not explained on the card. They expect you to go back to the rule book. So I found myself, when I was learning this, there's a lot of, well, what does this do? What does this do? Go back to the rule book, go back to the rule book. Not as nice of presentation as it could have been. Um, and then complaint number three is there's no official online army builder, which is kind of annoying. Now, our, um, our army builders... Um there are army builders on what? Android. There's army now, builders on Android. Now I just forget I, the one that I've used a, a hundred times for different games. Battle Scribe? Battle Scribe? Do they have something it for it? It has one, but it doesn't tell you what this stuff does for the most part. Okay. Battle Scribe's a little weird to work with. Unless you're playing GW, you know, Battle Scribe's a little flaky. And uh, what about, um, any, you know, of any web the, the other problem is this is a living system, so they do updates. How fast does Battle Scribe update? Yeah. X-Wing has an official app yeah. that says... Here, here's your cards, here's your points, everything's on the app, ready to go. When they publish an errata, the app goes updated at the same time. Right, which is there, weird. There isn't anything like that for Legion, and there's enough complexity in the construction of Legion, the right. number of options you have, that I would have very much appreciated it. Which is one of the things I really like about the AOS 
uh, from GW, their app. War Scroll Builder's fantastic. Yeah, so that's great. Um, and then... With one after effect to it. All right. And then in, in Infinity's... Um, Infinity Army is... Infinity is, Army is pretty good. It is my gold standard for what I think yeah. an army construction should look like. It looks really good. Um, if it worked offline, it would be 100% perfect. But uh, yeah. And I use Maya Cast for that, too. Well, it's not a different game, different, but different it game. works pretty good. I mean, you can get a good definition yeah, it, of stuff. It's more wiki format. The, the, the point is, there's not a cohesive army builder that includes right. your model stats, what the cards do, that is updated and easy to use. Right. Most definitely. So are those... And, uh, are there any key... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Are there any key... Uh, is there one thing specifically or any key uh, features or mechanics in this game that you think are the are like highlights of the game? So I normally violently hate random activations. I don't hate it in this game, which is amazing. By all definitions, I should not like this game, but <laughs> hey, I do. Um, mostly because there are random elements, but they're well-controlled. Right. Okay, it's not roll a random die to roll a random die to roll for a random effect to do a random thing. It's very well controlled. Um, I like that you get everything you need to play in a box. Not that enough of them, but you get everything you need to play in a box. The kits come complete. So these clone trooper boxes here, there's actually a clone missing from each squad because they come with, there's two heavy weapons in the box. The base clone squad is four dudes. You can then upgrade to an extra guy and a heavy weapon for a total of six models. Right. But there's two heavy weapons that they have available. So the box comes with all of this. Okay. You There is no, well, I have to make decisions on what I want to build. No, you actually have enough models to do all of it. So you, you get the you get the actual model with the extra weapon? Are we talking like uh, with some of the so things the, where the, you get a box and you, you, you have notice a model? The you'll notice the clones here. So okay. this squad of clones, there's seven models. This is how that box comes. Okay. In game, that's the smallest clone size available. You can upgrade to an extra guy and then pick one of two heavy weapons. Okay. But it comes with a model for, for all of each them. each option. Not a gun that you put on a model and you okay. have to pick one. You There is enough guys in it to make everything. And I, and I put that is rare. That is fairly rare for a game with this many options. Because normally you get a box that has the models that you have to choose it, it, which and, guns and, you want. And you wouldn't get enough of the guns, or it would be yeah. missing some. Okay. Um, it comes with all those, which is fantastic. You're good to go. What, so those are some uh, pros and cons. I haven't had a chance to sit down and play this game. It also has a really cool mission deployment selection that we're not going to use for the demo. Right. But if we get a chance, I'll briefly mention at the end. But this is, I said, I haven't played the game just yet. Uh, just like everybody else, just like the, in most of you watching, uh, if you haven't played the game yet, you've probably watched a couple of YouTube videos and so on and so forth about how it's played. That's the point I'm at right now. So Nick and I, after we're done here, we're going to set up, uh, we're going to go ahead and do our deployments and things. Uh, we're playing on a 4x4 four four space, uh, which I've constructed but haven't gotten completely ready yet, but it's going to work for our purposes. Oh, oh, one other comment. This game uses 6x3 tables. And whoever thought that was a good idea, <laughs> I need to have words with. Yeah, so that's what I was going to say. It's a 6x3 table instead of the, the we're, normal 6x4. We're going to chop, chop six inches off each side. So we're going to, yeah, we're going to play on a 4x4 four four space, which I've seen a number of people do, and it seems, it seems to work out fairly well. So all you do so. is your, your deployment's just double size. Yeah. That's all, all you do. That's that's how you fix it. But So if you have a space that's not 6x3, you can play the game. Just use your brain and, and kind of do some things. So... We're going to go ahead and, and uh, wrap this up here, and then we're going to uh, come back uh, and make an, our next video, which is going to be our playthrough of a few turns of the game, and how far we go in that depends on um, you know how things go as we go on. So we're going to show you how things are set up, and when we come back, we'll have deployments already done and be ready to start turns, basically. So uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, and we will see you in the next one. And keep asking the question, what game now? Hey, this is Dave. If you like what we're doing here at What Game Now, go ahead and click on one of the videos which should be on either side of me, or click right in the middle and go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the bell once you subscribe so that you know when we have new videos. Please go ahead and share us with your friends. Let everybody know that we're here. Thank you for watching, and thank you for all of our subscribers already. And we look forward to bringing you more content every chance that we get.